thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Todd Revolt. I'm with Atlassian. Uh, I'd like to make one disclaimer right at the beginning. I am not a developer, okay? So I'm uh, responsible for business development at Atlassian, and what I'd like to do is first take a little understanding of what you guys uh, do. So uh, how many developers do we have here today? So a few managers? Okay, okay, good, all right. So what I'd like to share is actually uh, an agile case study, which is Atlassian itself. And um, so I'll, in the, uh, specifically within Atlassian, the Confluence project, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, how many people here know about Atlassian? All right, okay, <laughs> one person, all right, I love it, okay. So Atlassian is a uh, company that was founded in 2002 uh, by two gentlemen, uh, Scott Farquhar and Mike Cannon Brooks. And basically, they left university after they graduated, and they decided to build a tool called Jira. And Jira is an issue tracker. It's a way of tracking everything that you're going to do in your business. And we use it in many different ways. We use it to track projects. We use it to track our finance, POs. We use it to track marketing events. We use it for everything. And we have over 250 employees. I think we're actually close to the 280 employees now, and we have basically 12 distributed software development teams uh, around the world. And then we support eight products, and those products are generally to help developers become more efficient. And I'll talk a little bit, I actually won't talk too much about the products themselves, uh, I'll leave that up to a, a, an expert. Um, so uh, we're headquartered in Sydney, Australia, which is where all of our development is done. And then we have a business office in San Francisco, which is about 60 people, there's about 100 and, uh, I'm sorry, there's about 200 people in Sydney, about 60 people in San Francisco, and then we have uh, another 15 people in Amsterdam, and those are our three main offices. And then we have about 17,000 customers. So we really uh, had to be agile, obviously, to have that many customers. And what we did when Mike and Scott first sat down is they started to look at um, what they thought was really important. And what they determined was that individuals and interactions were much more pro important than processes and tools. And so they really value employees. And they also wanted to develop working software. So they wanted to make sure that you weren't just creating documentation and sending customers documentation, but actually creating software that worked and you could get feedback on that. And I'll talk a bit more about that as well. And they also wanted to have customer collaboration. Feedback is very important for the agile process. Out of this group, how many people already, already are already using Agile processes? Two, three, four, five, okay, super. So the other thing they wanted to do was be able to respond to change. They wanted to have this quick moving process, right? So they started looking at the Agile Manifesto and they then started to assess their situation. And they assessed the situation by saying, it's two guys, we have no money, what are we gonna do? And they said, well, we don't have enough money for a sales team, so whatever we develop, it has to be able to sell itself. And if it's gonna sell itself, then it has to be very inexpensive. And if it's gonna be inexpensive, then you have to sell thousands of copies, right? If you wanna make any money. And to sell thousands of copies, you're gonna to have to go global. And so we have about 100, we have customers, 17,000 customers in 141 different countries. And so, to sell globally, you know, customers are going to have to buy because we can't sell it to them. We don't have any salespeople. So what they've done is they've created a, an environment where people can go, try the software, evaluate it for as long as they want, use the software, and then when they're ready to purchase, we give them a license key to move forward. So those assessing that situation built into our core values. And our core values are you have to build products that people love for don't build good products, then you're never gonna be able to hit those thousands of people, right? And the other thing is you wanna make sure that you treat the customer well. So you wanna give them legendary service. And these are actually our core values. I blurted out one of the words, but this is actually one of our core values. The other thing is you wanna build with heart and mind. Meaning you wanna build software that you would actually want to use. And then play as a team is really important. And the last one, which is be the change you see, uh, a quote from Gandhi. So if you see something that you don't like, or you see something that could be improved, it's a very open forum. Everyone can talk to anyone at any time. Uh, Mike and Scott own the company, it's a privately owned company, 
but at any time I can call Mike and Scott and have a discussion on any topic. So it's a very uh, flat organization in that sense. So enough about it last time. Uh, let's talk about what the motivation is behind using Agile and Agile processes. You know, why is a developer or a manager or the CEO or a student, why would you even care about having a process? So the first thing you start to think about, well, aren't processes, like why do I need a process? Aren't processes evil? Aren't they bad? Why, why have a process in place? And, or maybe I work at a large corporation and we had really defined processes for everything you do. And quite frankly, it was, it was, um, it sucked. And then the last one is for developers or managers, you know, why can't I just do the things that I like to do? Why do I have to have a process in place? Why can't I just code or manage in the style that I like? Right? Blocking you there, I think. So first I'd like to talk a little bit about what Confluence is. And Confluence is uh, an enterprise wiki. And an enterprise wiki is essentially a central repository for people to, to share ideas, to share documents, to share anything they want. Now, people use Confluence in many ways that, quite frankly, we never anticipated in the beginning. They use it for their website, they use it for intranets, they use it for knowledge management. There's so many different ways that people use Confluence that it really is sometimes surprising to even us. So the Confluence team is made up of 24 developers, uh, we have one Java architect on the team, we have uh, one product manager, and we have one product marketing manager. So there you can see we have 27 people just on the team. But that's not all. You also have 10 support engineers, two CEOs and co-founders, you have tech writers, graphic designers, marketing, support people, uh, release engineers, QA people. I mean, it, there's a whole group of people that support this effort. Plus, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of customers. I think Confluence last rated somewhere near 10,000 customers itself. So there's lots and lots of customers that you have to support as well. So even if you have a medium-sized project like Confluence, you can see that you have lots of stakeholders. There's tons and tons of people that are involved in this process. So anything that you do really has an effect the whole way down the chain. And so, why as a developer should you care about process? Well, or why should your developers care about process? I mean, it's up to the managers and the, to deal with the politics or the processes and things like that. Developers just want to code. Well, the reason why is because if you don't, you're gonna develop stuff that people, that they don't use, right? Or that no one really likes. And they're only using it because their manager told them to use it. The really interesting thing about Atlassian is the way we built our business is sort of a grassroots movement. It starts from the ground up. So we found that we enter into IT departments, and IT departments generally use our tools in different ways. And then from there, what happens is someone in marketing or someone in sales or someone in another department catches wind of the wiki or the way we use JIRA, which is our issue tracker. And they start saying, gosh, I can could, I could see how I can use that in my, my business. And so they start to think, well, it starts to sort of groundswell up, right? And so it starts to actually bubble up. It's not a, a CEO or a, or a CTO or a CIO saying, you must use these tools. It generally starts by uh, grassroots and growing through the population. The other thing you want to have process for is because you don't want to overwork yourself. We have this uh, interesting quote that I'll bring up in a second at Atlassian. And the idea is to not overwork yourself. And for a developer, you know, you don't want to create, and managers also, you don't want to create this bad code base. You don't want people yelling at each other, and you don't want to create an unhealthy environment. And so by having a simple process, it really helps people understand what's expected of them.